All right, in this video, we are comparing the baseline curves, uh, which is the project S curves for the early starts and the late starts for the same project. So first of all, let's just go through and we'll do the Gantt chart for the early starts. Uh, we can read that right off the table of dependencies. So we'd have A going from zero to two. B depends on A and it's three. So we have one, two, three. C depends on B and it's three. So we'd have one, two, three, just like that. D depends on B and it's two days long, so we find the end of B, come down, make it two days. Uh, and then E depends on D and it's three days. So we'll go out like that, right? Depends on D, three days long. All right, now let's switch up our colors for, uh, for the late starts. Uh, by looking at this, we don't actually need to draw the, the PDM network diagram to figure this out. You can kind of see uh, that A, B, D, E would be on the critical path, right? And C is not on the critical path because nothing depends on it and it's not the final, it doesn't end, at, it's not the final activity. So with that said, what we can do is we know that activity A has to be drawn from zero to two for its late start. It can't start any later than that because it is on the critical path. Same with activity B, that was three days long. Uh, same with, we'll draw all of the activity D and E first. So activity D went from five to seven, five to seven and activity E goes from seven to 10. Uh, and so activity C was the one that was not on the critical path. So it can end pretty much at the end of the project without affecting the end date. So its late finish would actually be 10 and it's three days long, making its late start would actually be seven to 10. Now, if you're confused about how I got that, uh, you can always draw the PDM network diagram if you would like. Uh, so here actually, I'll just, I'll just draw it down here and you can see just to confirm like how we did this by skipping the actual network diagram drawing. So there you go, here's the, the PDM network diagram in case you're just curious about that. Uh, I did draw the, the early start and early finish in blue, so all of these times will correspond. And then uh, the late start and late finish in green, so you'll actually see for activity C, we said that the late start was seven, late finish was 10, and there you go, seven and 10. So you can just look at that for a while if you're confused about how to skip that, uh, but it's a good skill to be able to just read a uh, table of dependencies and go right to the, the early starts and late starts for a simple pr project like this one. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to break these up into all of the periods. So our periods go from, uh, our periods start and finish at any time that an activity starts and finishes, so they'll all be like this. So we can label these periods for our early starts. We'll have periods one, two, three, four, and five. And then we'll also have, for our late starts, we'll have periods one, two, three, four. All right, now what we need to do is we'll write on our period total and our project cumulative. So we have it just like this. All right, and the way that we solve these is we just figure out the cost per day. The reason we have these periods is because when we break up the periods like this, we'll have a constant cost per day in each period. Uh, because in period one, we only have activity A. Activity A costs us $300 per day. And we have two days in period one, so our period total will be 600, giving us the project cumulative up until the end of period one, also 600. Uh, period two here, it only has activity B in it at $400 a day. So for the three days, this period total will cost us $1,200 for the whole period. Adding that, we'll get 1,800 for the, the project cumulative cost up until the end of period two. Here in period three, we have activity C and D. So 200 plus 400. So that's 400 a day plus 200 a day. So we're running $600 a day for two days in period three. So that will be another $1,200. And then bringing us up to a project total of $3,000. Here in a uh, period four, we have activity C and we have activity E. So we have $400 a day plus $100 a day. So this is gonna run as $500 a day for one day. So a period total of 500, bringing us up to 3,500. And then lastly, we have period five, it's two days long and it's only costing us $100 per day because activity E is the only activity in that period. So that will be a period total of 200 and bringing our, our final cost up to our project cumulative cost up to 3,700. All right, now let's do the same for the late starts. So again, activity or period one is exactly the same. So we have the project total is 600. The cumulative would be 600 here again, exactly the same. So Nothing has changed yet, uh, so it was 1,200 and 1,800. 
But now we have this uh, this period three, which actually goes from five to seven, but there's only one activity happening. So it's activity D. Activity D costs us $200 a day and it's two days long. So this is gonna run us $400, uh, bringing us up to a total of 2,200 for the project cumulative cost. And then lastly, we have this period four, which is gonna be pretty costly. We have activity C and activity E both running for the whole time during activity four. So we're going to have 400 plus 100, that's $500 a day. So we will have $1,500 total for this period, 1,500. And you'll see that when we add 1,500 to 2,200, we will finish with the same project cumulative cost of $3,700. So now what we'll do is we will just, like the previous videos, we will just graph our project S-curve uh, and we'll do one for the early starts, one for the late starts, and then we'll combine them and see what it looks like just so we can compare because that's the, that's the purpose of this video. So uh, here, let's, uh, for, let's do the early starts first. So for the end of period one, we're going to be up at about $600, which is about there. End of period two will bring us to $1,800, which is about there. Uh, end of period three will bring us to 3,000, which is right there. Next one will bring us up to 3,500. And then lastly, we'll finish off at 3,700, which is somewhere in there. So then all we can do is we can just connect the dots and we will get our nice project S curve for cumulative costs for this project uh, based on early starts. All right, uh, now let's look at the late starts. So, at the end of period one, which and notice again, these periods aren't necessarily exactly the same. Uh, we're missing this period here at the end of the eighth day, so I'll just keep that in mind. Uh, so the end of period one, we're going to be up to six hundred dollars again. Uh, but if you recall, the first couple of ones were the same. Uh, so if we end period two at the end of the fifth day, we'll be up at eighteen hundred, which again was up here somewhere. Uh, and then at the end of period three, so at the end of day seven, we're at twenty two hundred. So we just bump over. We only go up a little bit here. And then at the end of period four, we hit that $3,700 target. So we hit the same cumulative project cost regardless of the early start or the late start. And that should make sense because we are completing all of the tasks which all have a set cost. Uh, just we're completing them at different times based on the early starts or the late start. So we'll just connect these dots like that, like that, and like that, boom. All right, so now what we see is we have the, the project S-curve based on early starts, we have the project S-curve based on late starts, and what we can do also now is if we want, we can just compare them, and I'll just draw them on one graph here. Um, here, let's draw them on this graph so we can see the comparison. So we know that they were the same. Up until day five, they were exactly the same, right? So we hit this point. Um, we hit this point on the, the late starts. We also hit this point on the late starts, right? So we hit... Uh, 600 at the end of day two, yeah, we hit 1800 at the end of day five, but then here on day seven, at the end of day seven, we were only hitting 2200, so it will diverge a little bit from the original curve, so we will be like that, and then we come right back up again and hit that final target. So if we were to graph these on the same graph, hopefully we'll be able to kind of see that both of these, yeah, we we're kind of see that both are exactly the same, but then here it's going to bounce over there and then shoot up to meet at the same uh, project the total project cumulative cost. So there you go. Uh, this is, uh, we can compare them beside each other or we can overlay the two graphs. But what we have done is we've compared the baseline curves, also called the, the project S curves, uh, for the early starts and the late starts of this one single project.